G'day guys, welcome uh, to the preview of our big game, round two action against the Catters, the Geelong Footy Club at the MCG on a Thursday evening, our second game to start the year at the G, which is good, which is good, it's where you want to play. Um, but second game on a Thursday night, it's, you know, I reckon it stinks. It really does. There's not much you can do about it. You can't control it. Maybe the players like it. Maybe they like it. It, it doesn't really affect them. But from a fan point of view, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a football a football day. This is something about the fact that you gotta go up and go for, go to work in the morning. But anyway, it is what it is. It's 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 a bloody big game. It's a big game. They all feel like they're big games, but this one has got, I don't know, it's, it almost feels like it's got clutch written all over it, and that's something you don't really want to say in round two. Um, but there's a lot of confidence. Well, I'm, I'm feeling a bit of confidence with the fan base around this one. Probably 50-50 split, to be perfectly honest, but... There is a, a certain section of the community, current community out there um, that, that are really confident with this one. Um, this was an interesting tweet that I read this morning. Um, I won't mention the person, but it just, I'll just read it. We're winning this week. Uh, fucking get up and about. Um, we love, as us, we love to pull off wins against Geelong at the peak of their power. Or at their peak. Um, no doubt that we've had some, yeah, we've had some wins over the Cats even when we were really poor. Uh, I remember winning a game against Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Dennis Armfield kicked the, maybe three goals. That was maybe under Brendan Bolton, uh, second year in charge. Could have been, even been his first year. Um, and then we had that win down at the Cattery during COVID. When there was no was no crowds, and Geelong ended up going on to play in the grand final against the Tigers that year. Um, I don't know whether Geelong were at their absolute peak then. Um, been a bloody good. They've been bloody good though for such a long time. Um, I feel, I feel Geelong were at the peak of their power. In rounds 18, 2022, when they played us at the MCG, and then they went on, obviously, to win the premiership. And I feel like that was a football team at the peak of their power. Um, I went to that game, and I wouldn't say so I was blown away um, by what they did, because I, I already knew that they were an exceptionally good football team. But... You just knew that night that they, oh, they were going to go all the way that year. Um, they hit they hit, they hit something very special last year, Geelong, the Geelong team. And it, it reminded me something along the lines of our 95 team, almost like Chris Scott handed the keys over to the players because they were so experienced and said, there you go, boys, I trust you. I trust that you know what you're doing. I'm giving you, I'm giving you total autonomy, okay, to run this show. Okay, we'll just guide you. We'll guide you. Okay, but you've got the keys to this. Um, and that reminded me of us in 95. And Parkin did pretty much did exactly that. He handed it, he handed it the keys up that year. Um, similar age demographic. And they they that night we faced them. We had a pretty good team in that night too. We had the Fab Five. Um, we had those five midfielders running around together. We had our spine intact. Um, you know, we would have had a couple of players out. They didn't have Tom Stewart, but they, yeah, I thought we were, we were serviceable by that night, but geez, they just, they just dismantled us across every, every line, really. Um, and just their trust, their trust in each other. Um, and it, was, it didn't come as any, any surprise that they, they did that to Sydney in the grand final. None at all. Um, and they, they thoroughly deserved what they achieved last year. So that that was the peak. That was the peak for Geelong. And I don't feel 2023 round two, and it's so early in the season, they're anywhere near that. 
Does that say they're still not a good football team? Oh, fuck. They're still, I think, better than us. Oh, well, they are. They are. But this is the perfect time. This is, for me, the perfect time to get them. Um, they are the, I feel like they're, they're right for the picking. I, I really do. Um, physically, they're not ready. I think personnel, they're not ready. And I've got no doubt that they're slightly, just slightly off mentally as well. Almost in, in a, in a, that they, they realize this, this is going to be a long season, a long season. Um, and they're very good at this. They're very good at this. And they're a lot better than any other club in the competition at, at reading the length of the season. And given what they achieved last year, um, do they necessarily want to push it too hard early? Um, cause they are essentially a little bit behind the eight ball. I just, I just, they're, they're not at their peak, guys. They're not at their peak. So this, it gives me a little bit of confidence. And things that other things that give me confidence is, I mean, Selwood's not there anymore. And I know that they're more than just Joel Selwood, but I mean, every time that we played against Geelong, he, he could do something special. I mean, he sunk us in a game at Marvel Stadium one night. It was probably the worst night of my life, that one, when he, when he kicked that goal late in the game against us. And he was awesome in that round 18 against, it was probably his best game was against us in round 18 last year. He always lifts against us and there's just something about him. And I don't know, no Duncan, does Duncan come back in? I'm, I'm not all over their injuries, but personnel, their back line, defensively, they're, they're slightly off. Um, and I'm talking whole team defence too. I mean, it's more than just your back six. So they've got the personnel problems down there. Um, no Tom Stewart. He didn't play last year, but there's no Collar Jasney. Does he come back? I'm not all over his his injury. And I know Jack Henry is still on a moon boot. And they're vitally important players for the Cats. And you're asking Asaba Radagalia just to come in and I know he's been trained up as a defender in the VFL and he's come in, but you're asking new guys to come in to a back six um, and just, and you're, and, you're, and you're asking a Sam DeConning, who's very early in his career, who looks slightly off himself. And I thought he was slightly off even before he fell down with that knee injury last week. I just, he looked all at sea. Down there. So you're asking now Sam DeConning and Osava Radigalia to run the show down there without Colour Jasney, without um, uh, who's the other one, without uh, Jack Henry, without Tom Stewart. Um, do they have to pull a rein and send Mark Lickersabs back down there for a bit of experience and a bit of guidance? Um, it's bloody interesting. It's bloody interesting. So defensively, I think they're off. We will, we will score against them. We will need to find other avenues. And it's not just a case of saying, okay, oh, Harry and Charlie are going to have a field day. I think Sam DeConning and Asava Radigalia are probably capable enough to holding those guys at bay. Although DeConning killed Harry last year. Killed him. But Harry, Harry's in good shape. In good shape. Physically in good shape. And I think mentally in good shape as well. Um Maybe he was sore in that game last year against this kid, but he pulled his pants down. And I, I'd, if I was Harry, I'd, I'd be I'd be wanting to work this fucking kid over in this game because he was he was on the nose. Um, he was on the nose, Sam DeConning against the Pies. Brody Brody Mychek, he he was all over him like a cheap suit in that first quarter. And he and I know he heard his knee and came back on and limped around. Um, there's a big, big opportunity for, for Harry to make a big statement here against this kid. Um, and, yeah, but it's the next layer for us. We know that. So where are we going to get our other goals from? Um, where are we going to get them from? And that's going to be the question mark that we're going to – I think we're going to be asking those questions for the whole year, and it's going to be a source of frustration for us. Um because right here, right now, we're not getting much out of Silvani. We're not getting much out of Jack Martin. And and the, the Smalls, as much as they looked like they were going to be something very exciting for us early in the year last year, it it's, hasn't quite worked out thus far. Although we, we haven't got them all together. Still no Corey Durden. 
Lots improving. Always big question mark. And is, is Zach Fisher a small forward? We don't think he is. More of a high half forward. So we need to find goals. It's not as simple as just saying, okay, Geelong are a little bit down defensively. Okay, we're going to kick a bag on them. Uh, because we know up the other end, they're intact. They're intact. Uh, they've got their, their big guns down there. They've got Hawkins. He looked a little bit sore last week and he hasn't had a preseason. So he's underdone. Cameron's still there. They've got those those three smalls. Um, Gr- Grime Myers, Stengel, who looks really good. Um, and Brad Close, who was quiet last week. And, and, and Rowan always causes headaches. Always. Um, I even remember in that game, we beat them. We beat them in that game at Cadinia Park. Uh, during COVID, he was the one who lit them up. He was the one who uh, who got them back into the game. I think he was fucking playing on Plowman. Um, so if people are saying bring Plowman into play on Gary Rowan. You're fucking rocks in your head, seriously. Um, and they've now got Ollie Henry as well. Who I think I think is a really good young player. So um, they're intact in their front half, but are they are they in sync at the moment? Are they mentally switched on? And I thought our defence was good last week. It was actually good. So what we did really well defensively, um, I think it's a big tick. Um, but it's what Collingwood do really well. So we can't just say, well, Collingwood ran all over the top of them and think that's us because that that that's not us. So what Collingwood do, uh, which we don't do, and we, oh, we just don't suddenly just become Collingwood. But this is why Collingwood run over the top of Geelong and really pushed them last year is they ask so many questions. They just continually, they continually, they're relentless in asking questions of your defence. And I'm talking about defence all over the ground, your zone defence, the way you want to defend the ground. They just continue to attack with energy and confidence. They run, their belief, they're in sync. Um, and they are skillful and they're brave in the way they want to move the ball. And, I, they, and that's not us. That's not us. Um, so as much as I would like to think to go into this game with confidence because I don't feel Geelong are there at the moment, I don't know. I still don't know whether we are actually good enough to actually beat them. Um, but they don't, they're not scaring me at the moment. They're not... They're not, they're, 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 it's not like this invincible Geelong team. I actually go into this thinking, okay, if we can, if we can actually, actually add an extra dimension to our game and get something going offensively, um, we can get them. We honestly can get them. I, I, I truly believe that. Changes, um, I don't know. Does it really matter who we're going to bring in? I get a sense we're going to play. I just feel we're going to play Pitnet after his performance in the VFL. He actually looked really good. I reckon that makes, that makes, I've got fucking notes everywhere you guys. That makes actually Jack's, Jack's uh, position in the team obsolete, I reckon, if he, if he, if, if, if P, TDK plays. Because I think Martin at least has got more speed than Jack. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Hollands and Cowan. I, I don't think Holland, I can't want to play. He came off. He looked sore last week. Hollands, does he play? Got no. I've got no trust in Paddy, o, Paddy, Paddy Dow or Lockie O'Brien. They both could play. Is there any more underwhelming top 10 draft picks in the history of the game at, still at the same club that they started and in their sixth year? Top 10 picks. Name me, name me a pair that more underwhelming than those two that you have any confidence in to come in. Love to see Corey Durden come back in. Don't think you will. Don't know about Kemp Carroll. Honey, got no confidence in any of those. So um, the Cats, we know. We know that they're down on a little bit of firepower at the moment, particularly in their back half. Um, I'm fucking excited. I really am. I'm really excited about this one because I believe, I believe if we think, if we think we are some, if we think we are something, and Chris Scott had a fucking backhand slap against us last week saying that after the game that we shouldn't be playing in the round one fixture. That game, Collingwood, that game, Collingwood and Geelong should have been the round one game. That was a backhand. We think we are something 
we come out on Thursday night. I'm not asking us to do a number on Geelong, but I'm asking us to come out and have a really good win. Um, a really good win. Let's see how we go.